Hello everyone and welcome to ML Dawn. Um, in the last video, what we did was we created an, an environment called the MRI environment and then we learned how we can activate and deactivate that environment. And we did all of that using Anaconda. Now, in this video, what we're going to learn is how can you replicate the environments uh, that I have on my computer exactly on your own machine, right? And in order to help you do that, uh, what I've created is a list of all the packages that I have installed on my own machine. Um, <clears throat> um, let me just go to the directory that I have my project in, the MRI, the MRI brain, uh, brain Tumor Detection uh, Project. So it's under user Mehran, PyCharm Projects, and we have private ML done and yes, yes, over here. Yeah. <clears throat> so I've created this uh, file called requirements.txt, right? And if you open this up, this is literally a snapshot of all the packages that I have on my, on my machine, and in particular in, in an environment that I've created in my own machine. And you, you notice that next to each package, we have uh, the version of that package that is currently installed on my machine, right? So I, I, I created this using a pip, by the way. It's a, again, pip is another package manager that you could also use it to take a snapshot of, your, of the packages installed in your environment. You can also do that with conda, by the way. It, and the command is simple. Uh, pip freeze is the command, and then you specify uh, in what file, in what in what directory would you like that snapshot to be saved into, right? <clears throat> now, uh, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna we're gonna use pip to open this file, right? And w and we will ask pip to install each and every one of these packages on your system, in particular in your environment, uh, but not just any version of those packages, the version that we've specified, right? Now, because we are being far too specific about the version, what might happen in some of your machines is that you might run the installer and it would go line by line through this file and it would grab each, pa each package and install it in your system, right? In your environment. Um, what could happen is, depending on when you're uh, watching this video, depending on uh, the updates of these packages that we currently have, Sometimes what you might encounter is error messages that uh, that the particular uh, version uh, that we are asking pip to install are not available, right? So if that happens in your case, uh, I'm, I'm, maybe maybe it will also happen in my case. I'm not sure, but if that happens, I'll, I'll show you how you can fix it. But a uh, long story short, uh, there is no I mean there is no easy fix to it. But uh, let's just install uh, install all of these packages, and hopefully, if that happens, I'll show you. If it didn't, I'll explain to you how you can save, uh, how you can uh, resolve the issue. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm just gonna close this. So remember, this is the directory you're in, right? I'm just gonna go into my uh, my command line. Right. So I'm in users Mehran, right? So the, if I open the directory here, so I want to, I want my command line to reside. I mean, I want to go into this very directory where where I've got my requirements that text, um, and do my magic. Yeah, so I literally copy this and I go cd space, and then for some reason it, it did this the last time as well. Uh, it just copies the whole thing, uh, you know, twice. I'm not sure why that happens. Um, but anyway, oh, I know what the problem is. <coughs> the the forward slash in the beginning, for some reason, it's not. Oh, my bad. So let me see where we are now. Yes, we are at, at the same directory. As you can see, we can see uh, the requirements file there. <coughs> now, remember, the goal is to replicate not my system on your own system, but the the environment that I have on my system on the same environment that you have on your system, right? Remember, so we still haven't installed many packages on the environment 
that we've created together in the in the previous video previous video um, so let's just uh, first activate our MRI environment again Kanda and Liz will show you the environments that are currently available on your system <coughs> which in this case the base environment is currently active uh, using that star I can say that because of that star we got ANN and we got MRI right um, so MRI is the one that we created together so CLS let's uh, clear things a little bit I'm gonna activate MRI you notice that MRI is activated now right now here again notice that well, we are in the same directory right remember directories are different from environments right so you could you could be in the same directory but you could switch between 20 different environments at the same time but you're still residing in that directory right so there are different concepts <clears throat> now let's take a look at the pip command so the, the command is pip install requirements that text right now here's a little trick that you have to you have to know you put a dash r in the middle there right and dash r that stands for recursive it means that when you open the file requirements that text you you you'll encounter so many lines of um of stuff in the file so you i want i'm asking you to recursively go through each and every one of those lines grab the package and the version of the package install it in this environment that is mri and then go to the next one should you encounter any problem just let me know okay so that is the command let's just press enter and see what happens hopefully no error will happen but if that happens we can talk about it now I, as you can see it is c collecting all the packages with the specific versions uh, that we've asked and remember that uh, what it does is it goes through each and every one of those lines uh, you know one by one right and, uh, and and that's a good thing because if let's say you have 200 different uh, lines in your file and somewhere down the line then maybe uh, on the 20th line there is a mistake or I mean there's an error like that that packet that that particular package could not be fine be found and then you, what you can do is you simply conclude that okay the first 19 packages have already been installed and and we're, we're, we're done with them right so you can you can easily assume that those are gone you can even erase that from your requirements file and and try to troubleshoot the one that is causing you the trouble right <clears throat> now um, I'm gonna just let this go um, and you see so, so so for example here you see tensorflow right that's uh, we, are, we are already on tensorflow collecting tensorflow now if you go into the requirements file um tensorflow tensorflow as you can see it is uh, so it is alphabetically ordered so o p q r s t so that's good news so it means that we're already here right so we're near the end for collecting the packages so that's that's a good sign so while this is happening um i just want to show you something i've created a a github repository for mldon.com right um let me just go to the github directly now this is the the github repository of ml don now if you go to ml don projects so you've got um two different types of projects here one is projects that are from scratch it's mostly python and numpy stuff so if you go in from scratch you see so i have currently two only two codes here one about stochastic gradient descent one about relu um I mean they're very nice nice code and nice code and uh, nice visualizations um, I recommend you to to take a look but the thing that we are concerned with right now is the Py the PyTorch uh, folder now if you go there you find the brain tumor detector folder right now if you go in there there's nothing there currently I, I all, all I have is a readme file that says okay this is an ongoing project and gets updated according to the video playlist by ML Don at my step-by-step -step at ML Don playlist right anyway what I'm gonna do is after I'm done with this requirements that text uh, file I'm gonna put this link um, uh, to, to this uh, to this guitar repository in the description uh, below and I'm gonna put uh, the requirements that text file 
in this GitHub repository uh, and put the link in the description so that you could easily find it and you can you can download it easily and you can do exactly what I've what I've um, what I've shown you okay so that's that, uh, and, and by the way, this uh, repository will get updated as we go along with, uh, you know, developing our brain tumor detector, okay? So it's going to be a living organism, if you will. Now, let's see what's happening here. We're still stuck here. So what I'm going to do is, um, it might take a long time. I'm just going to pause the video and see, and, and when, when it's done, I'm going to come back, okay? So until a few seconds later... See ya. Well, hi. It actually finished and without any problems actually. It went through so many successful installation uh, messages and eventually finished. Now, if you face a problem, right, which is very likely, you look at the error message, it's gonna be in red and you see what the package, what the problematic package is. Say, for example, it says that the, this specific version of GPU till package was not found or there was a problem with you know retrieving this particular version you'd literally open this requirements.txt file you literally grab this right just cut it out cover the space go to the very end and literally paste it at the very end and save the file okay and then rerun that very command again so the the pip um, install dash r requirements.txt okay so this way you, you will put all the problematic uh, packages at the very end of the file now uh, you you might be able to install some different versions of um, of these packages manually okay but this way you will make sure that you will you will install all the packages that you can install without any problems for sure okay so this way you will replicate my environment and your system um, uh, the best way possible, let's say, okay? So now what you have is uh, all of the packages that were in the requirements.txt file, right? Now, there are a few packages that, uh, that I have not included in there because of the same reason that I told you, they just cause a lot of problems, okay? Now, what I did was um, I actually installed them separately. Now, I'm gonna show you, so the, the one package that you definitely need to install and by the way as I'm, I'm as I'm talking to you it is in the process of installation so if you go to pytorch.org right this is the website you scroll down depending on the configuration of your operating system and the version of pytorch you want to use the package manager you want to use whether you have GPU or CPU uh, or which which version of CUDA you're using uh, which whatever you click on the, this command the connect the command that has been generated is going to be different right so in my case i have a windows machine uh, the language of choice is python and my cuda version is 10.2 right and i'm interested to use pip because to be honest with you conda has given me a lot of troubles in the past um, for some reason it just keeps freezing maybe it's just my system i don't know but I've, I've always had a good experience with pip. So what I did was I literally copied this command and went to my, say, I mean, let's say uh, I'm in my command line. I activate my, my, uh, my environment. And then over here, I literally paste this, right? By the way, pip has different versions. The pip that I have on my system is pip uh, the original pip it, it's not pip version number three okay so then when you press enter the whole process starts it's gonna uh, you know install torch torch vision uh, torch audio whatever have you okay what uh, the whole package of pytorch in other words right now as we're talking I've already in, uh, started the installation process and and it is already uh, downloaded uh, torch torch vision torch audio and requirements satisfied it's also downloaded pillow which is again another in important package um, in the whole pytorch uh, collection now okay so everything is installed now uh, under environment as you can see this is the, the exact command that i told you i literally pressed enter 
and that was it. The program or, or the platform that we're gonna use in which we're gonna, we will develop this uh, brain tumor detector is called Jupyter Notebook, right? And um, the way to, uh, to execute Jupyter Notebook is literally by the command Jupyter space and then you have Notebook, right? Now when you do this, remember I'm under MRI environment, right? When you do this in your browser, a new tab gets just pops up. And uh, for some people, for some systems, the the, the default browser is uh, Chrome, and for some, it's, uh, it's just you know your classic um, Internet Explorer, right? Now, depending on where you activate this environment from, so I was in Users Mehran, um, Users Mehran that is where the first uh, window opens up, right? So you can see Jupyter here. And what is what you see here is just a, f a file explorer, right? So I know that my projects is on uh, PyCharm projects. I'm in um, MRI, sorry, uh, private MLDON directory and then MLDON step-by-step. Step, and then this is the tumor detector. Now this is the, the Jupyter notebook that we're that we're gonna work on. So, just to just to double check whether uh, PyTorch is installed correctly, I'm just gonna run this. I'm just gonna import Torch. It got executed. It gave it gave no error messages, so that is a good sign. Let's just um, there are a couple more packages that you might need. So one is called um, OpenCV, yes, exactly. So OpenCV is a very important package. It, it's, it really helps you, uh, you know, uh, loading image type data sets into your, into your uh, code. Very simply, it, and every image has red, green, and blue components or channels. Um, so what it does is it, it, you can easily extract all of these channels separately and put all of them together if you want to. It's, uh, I mean, it's it's really it really makes your life easy uh, when it comes to um, you know working with these packages. Now, one thing that I'm going to show you, which is really cool, and is that you don't have to necessarily you know run your I mean install your packages through the command line directly. When you're in Jupyter, what you can do is you can install like literally write the uh, the command, which is pip install, and then you have opencv Python. So that is just the command. Uh, that the creators of OpenCV have recommended for us. Now, when you put this exclamation point on, in the beginning, it is as if you're running this code uh, under the MRI environment in your command line, right? So that is the beauty of it. You have opened up Jupyter Notebook under the MRI environment, but you can run the command line commands in Jupyter as if you were in command line and you were under uh, the MRI environment. So if you run this, as you notice, the type of this cell is, is a code cell, right? So it's runnable as a code. So I run it and you will see some messages popping up, uh, the same messages that you would have gotten if you had typed this uh, under your command line. Command line. Apparently we already have them, requirements satisfied. So that's a good, that's a good sign. I was just trying to be careful whether, whether we had them or not. And um, yeah, I, I think we're good to go. I think we're good to go. Um, I think we've got all the packages we need. Um, the, just the last one that I wanna make sure we are, we are, we're good uh, with is another package called scikit-learn. And okay, I just wanna import, okay, scikit-learn is also installed. I, I think we're good to go, to be honest with you. I think we're good to go. So I'm just gonna get rid of all of these imports. And this is just my message. Uh, as, a, as a markdown cell. So this is just a markdown cell where you can just put in comments. So you run it and you see the codes, uh, the, the comment and okay, perfect. Now what you can say is you have replicated the environment on my system into your own system, right? So you at this point, you should have an MRI environment with the same packages that I have, okay? Now, um, that is good. I think we have set up the, uh, the the foundation perfectly. Now, in the future, if we need any packages to be installed, it's very easy. We can install them under the MRI environment. But in the next video, what we're going to do is we will find a proper MRI data set. And hopefully we will uh, read in the data set using Python. 
and we'll also import the packages that we might need, okay? Um, so I hope that this has been informative for you, and if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comment section down below, and uh, also you can follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and make sure you check out my website, www.mldown.com. There are good stuff there, good posts and stuff. Um, also, I'm gonna put a link to the requirements that text file in the description below, uh, where where you're gonna be sort of diverted to the GitHub of mldown.com. Okay, perfect. So see you in the next one. Bye.